Hi there everyone. Today's video is going to be all about going fast because we're going to be analyzing the 533 Switchback Pro racing frame. Now I was lucky enough to be contacted by Armando Gallegos. Now for those of you who don't know, Armando is a former aerospace engineer and the fleet manager for Evan Turner, arguably one of the fastest FPV racing pilots. He provided CAD of the frame and the black box logs that we're going to be looking at today. And so it's time to ask and answer the question, can the 533 Switchback Pro be made to go even faster? Let's get into it. All right, so let's start with the roll axis. And the first thing to say here is that we really must congratulate Armando on an exceptionally clean build. There's really very little noise across the whole frequency band. And that really speaks to, you know, good soft mounting, uh, attention to detail when putting the quad together and you know as well a, a good frame design. So if we look here we've got uh, frequencies up to 500 Hertz because the gyro data was logged at 1 kilohertz on this build and we can see that their main uh, frame resonance in this range is, is here at uh, about 270 Hertz and I've performed a harmonic uh, simulation on this frame. If you want more information about what a harmonic simulation is, I'm going to link a, a video in the description which is my review of the FPV Cycle Glide which talks a little bit more about harmonic analysis. So if we look here at how the quad is moving at 270 Hertz, you can see that primarily this is a torsional mode. So you've got the motors twisting on the end of the arms in a, a sort of asymmetric way where one side twists together while the other side twists apart. And you can also see mixed in there some other, some other vibrational modes, but the dominant one is this torsional mode with the motors twisting. You can see as we get up to about 400 hertz, there's another increase in uh, vibrational energy. So let's have a look at what's going on at 400 hertz. Here we can see that the dominant mode is uh, more of a pitching mode. So we've got the, the quadcopter pitching forward and back. Um, again, the motors are twisting somewhat on the end of the arms, but the arms are also bending up and down. So this is really a combination of uh, a number of different modes. And when you've got a combination of modes like this with relatively big contributions from several uh, different mode shapes, you do tend to see a little bit more of a, a spread out of the, of the frequency of the peak. So you tend to get a broader peak rather than a, a narrow, sharp peak. If we look now at the pitch axis, we can see that's a little bit more going on. There's a small peak down here at just about 150 hertz. Uh, another sort of uh, broader peak of vibrational energy at about 220 hertz. And then uh, an even larger peak at 400 hertz, which is that pitching mode that we saw in the previous slide. It's appearing again on this axis even more so as we would expect because this is the dominant uh, axis of that movement that we were looking at. So let's have a look at the 150 hertz vibration. Now this is very typical for sort of the first resonant mode of a, a traditional quadcopter frame. We've got arms bending up and down and we tend to find that the opposite corners move together. If we look now at 220 hertz, we can see that this is it's quite similar actually to the 150 hertz mode of vibration but here we've got all of the motors moving up and down together rather than opposite corners moving in antiphase to each other. And we can see that there are other mode shapes that are involved here. It's not a pure um, movement of the motors up and down and it's those other mode shapes that are coming in that are meaning that we can see this on the pitch axis. This is something that I talk a bit more about in my, my glide video is that sometimes you can have a mode shape which doesn't have any pitching component and you would think oh it's not going to affect the pitch axis at all but then when the other mode shapes start coming in they bring a little bit of asymmetry to the mode shape and suddenly it can appear on pitch or roll or yaw and it can be quite bad because the ability of the quadcopter to amplify vibrational energy at a particular frequency is always to do with how close in frequency the excitation is 
to the resonant frequency of a particular mode shape. So in this case at 220 hertz, the dominant mode are all the motors moving up and down. That's allowing it to gather vibrational energy in a way and producing a peak. And then the reason that we see the peak on the pitch axis is actually due to the other mode shapes that are being excited and causing a little bit of asymmetry and making that mode shape appear on pitch. So it's, it's really interesting to see with a harmonic analysis how um, it's the contribution of multiple mode shapes that leads to a particular response. And as we said before, when you've got lots of mode shapes contributing, you tend to get a slightly broader peak because all of these mode shapes have different resonant frequencies that, they're, that they want to be excited at. And so when you look at the contribution of all of those, you're adding up lots of peaks together and that's producing a kind of broader spread out peak rather than something that's really tight and sharp. So finally, let's take a look at the yaw axis. And what we can see is that the yaw axis for this frame is really very quiet. There's almost no resonant activity going on. And this may be due to the geometry of the frame and the weight distribution that comes with that. The Switchback Pro has a very short body with all the weight concentrated right in the center of the arms. Unlike a freestyle frame, which would have a longer body perhaps with a VTX hanging out of the back and a camera far ahead of the flight controller. We see that there are your modes for this frame, but uh, they do occur very close in frequency to a pitching mode and it seems to be dominant. Uh, in fact, you can see a little bit of the yaw mode potentially here at just above 400 hertz, but I mean, it's barely anything. Now, I'd be interested to know if you have a lot of experience with black box logs of racing frames. Let me know if this type of very quiet yaw log is typical of what you tend to see. Um, in freestyle frames, I would expect to see, you know, one or two peaks on the yaw axis and maybe some uh, cross-coupled activity from other axes. But uh, here it's very, very quiet. And I'd love to know if uh, in your experience that's typical. So there's absolutely no doubt that the Switchback Pro is a really, really fast racing frame. But can we make this frame go even faster by applying what we've learned from doing this resonance analysis? I think that there are some minor changes that we could make to the design that could improve its performance even further. And I think it really comes down to the torsional stiffness and the bending stiffness of the arm in the vertical direction. I would say that if we did want to make any design improvements to the Switchback Pro, an arm with a more square section would increase torsional stiffness and wouldn't affect the strength or the weight of the arm. So as an example, the current arm on the Switchback Pro is about 8.6 millimeters wide by five millimeters thick. We could make it slightly more square. Let's say go to six millimeters thick by 7.2 millimeters wide. Now that keeps the cross-sectional area of the arm and therefore the weight and the strength uh, exactly the same, but it increases the stiffness in the vertical direction and it also increases critically the torsional stiffness of the arm and we'll, we'll talk about that on the next slide. And obviously by going to a narrower arm, you also reduce the blockage of the thrust column from the prop slightly. So how would a square arm section affect this mode? Now, this mode here of the frame was um, the one that was most troublesome to, to my eye. And we can see that if we were to make the arm stiffer in torsion, that would mean that the motors would find it more difficult to twist uh, on the end of the arm in the way that they are doing here. And also if the arm was a little bit thicker, six millimeters rather than five millimeters, you'd also see that um, it would be more difficult for the motors to bend up and down as you see they're doing in this, in this resonant mode. And so that change would really make a big difference to what I think is the most challenging resonant mode of this frame. Why do we want to go to a square arm section? Well, torsional stiffness is given by this formula in the top right. And uh, it's quite a long formula, so I'm, I won't read it out, but uh, you can see that it features uh, A and B. And I've got a diagram here showing you that A is half of the width of the arm and B is half of the thickness of the arm. And if we plot this formula, for an arm with a constant cross-sectional area, so that's a, a constant weight, a constant strength in some respect, 
we can see that the best performance is actually given by having A equal to B. Because the thickness of carbon plate that's available, you can't get any thickness that you want. You're limited. You can have sort of 2.5 or 3 or 5 or 6 millimeters. It's not always possible to achieve an absolutely square section. But in, to my mind, the closer you can get to a square section, the better the performance of the frame is going to be because you're going to have more of that bending stiffness in the vertical axis, which is so important. You're going to have more torsional stiffness. And provided that you don't make the arm narrower than it is deep, you should you know, not suffer from uh, any bending modes in plane that you need to worry about. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive on the Switchback Pro. There is no doubt that it is a really, really fast frame. But by applying a harmonic analysis and some engineering principles, we can make suggestions for how it can perform even better and perhaps go even faster. If you enjoyed this video and you're new to the channel, I invite you to check out some of my other content where I take a similar scientific approach to seeing how we can make our quads fly even better. If you'd like to support this work, I have a Patreon. I'll put a link for that down in the video description. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. I love reading them and I try and reply to as many as I can. Until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.